I'm an economist. That's my background. I did a postgrad in finance in my country, Peru. And based on my education and work experience, I managed to apply for permanent residency from my country, which was possible back in the day. Um, however, as soon as I got to Canada, just the week after I got to Canada, I enrolled and pursued a master in business administration at Ivy School of Business in Ontario. That was a two-year MBA. And then I joined the corporate world again. I joined to a couple of global organizations, uh, Finning International first in strategy and also um, as a commercial or corporate manager for HSBC. Uh, and once I joined the immigration world through HSBC Capital, that opportunity, traveling around the world, talking with um, so many wealthy people that wanted to migrate to Canada and also be exposed to other people that also wanted to come to Canada, instigated my, my desire to enhance my learning and pursue immigration law at UBC. Um, that was many years ago. I've been in the immigration industry for 15 years now. What I like the best for sure is the when you receive all these messages of gratitude and um, from people from all over the world that um, appreciate all the effort that you put into it. And that really is, makes it up for so many other things. Um, it's quite a rewarding industry because you can tell the difference that you make in these people's lives. And that's why I'm still around. Coming to Canada, being the first one in my family to be here. Um, and then, uh, then my sister came and then my parents came. Um, coming from a um, modest family uh, in a third world country and having grown personally and professionally in a first world country uh, as a woman is also a, an accomplishment. I believe that I have impacted many people's lives um, and that is, I don't think everybody can get to say that and that makes me feel happy and proud. This is such an, an emotional journey for, for the clients. It's, it's a business that has such an emotional component, no matter how much you try not to not to worry too much. I can't. It's simple. And that, that's something that can be good or and bad because uh, I would say the the success of the business that I have built is because people um, know that I care and my own, my team cares. And however, that represents a big burden, emotional burden on us. And the the worst part is you cannot detach and the responsibility is such it's not like any other business and I work in corporates in corporations I work in different roles the the consequences of making a mistake in this business are huge and that takes a toll it's a combination of having um, strong analytical skills and being very detail-oriented, not average detail-oriented. It's another level. You need to have a devotion to of service. If you join the industry and you look at it as simply a business, you are going to be disappointed because what keeps you going, in from my perspective, is that uh, that a uh, part of yourself that wants to help, that wants to deliver results, what motivates you to go the extra mile is not, in my opinion, business. It's that you don't want to disappoint. You want to deliver on the trust that you have been given. Well, I help with all, 
all immigration needs except for uh, refugee applications for now, but that's something that is um, that I'm considering to explore, especially in the current context. The longer I'm in the industry, the more I I see the need, and especially in in the community that speaks Spanish. That's not what in my other language, and that's where I find I could make a difference. But I would say all aspects of immigration, except for refugee, is something that I we can do. I would say you need to do you do diligence. Um, speak with people in the industry. Um, have your expectations in place. What I have found. Uh, what I've heard is that many join immigration, as I said before, for uh, with expectations of um, high income, right? High income, flexible hours, uh, and that they are in control. And that is completely misleading in my perspective. You cannot have a part-time immigration job I, I, I even consider it and I realized it was impossible. If you want to make a career in immigration, you need to put your heart and your your energy, your soul into it. Because it's such a dynamic industry, you need to be immersed in the industry, I would say, full time. And when I started in this industry, there was no score system. It was just one factor of eligibility. It was a first come, first serve uh, world where the the backlogs were huge and the processing times kept increasing because the demand for Canada kept growing. Versus now, well, well, in, in I would say January two thousand fifteen, I can't remember that uh, was the introduction of the express entry system by the federal government, where there is an ad another factor, which is the score that filters, right? Who get to move forward. So it's a different game. It's quite objective. There's no room for officers or anybody's discretion on the life of the people. However, not everybody can make the, the, the score expectations that the government has uh, changed over time. So it's a different game now. Now there is, Besides that, now people need to focus on what are the priority occupations that the governments are uh, focusing on. So it's, yeah, it has changed a lot. Canada's brand is so strong and it's such a diverse country. It's not perfect, but by far, in my opinion, um, the, the best destination for uh, immigration, in my opinion.